Hey everybody, so Danella Danella Citri here, and as you guys can see, I got an awesome guest. <laughs> I got Becca, with so Becca hey on guys. my screen today. So Becca, hi. you wanna go ahead and talk about your, say hi and then talk about your channel a little bit? Uh, sure, I mean, okay. I was sorting blocks. <laughs> hey everybody, I feel like I should not put my head right here behind the logo. I feel like I should slide over a little bit. I'm still waking up. I have a cup of coffee somewhere over here. So I know on Saturday mornings, Sean always does his brekkie with Sean. Well, this is coffee with Becca. Yes. I need some coffee. My name is Becca. If you don't know who I am, I have a YouTube channel called So Becca. You can check that out. Every Friday night, I do a live stream for a couple of hours. And once a month, I try to do a tutorial and maybe another video or two. I also have been playing with writing patterns and selling those in an Etsy shop. I'm very new to that. So this is a adventure that is slow to start for me, but I am really enjoying it. So if you like any sort, if you like quilting tutorials, if you like live streams, if you like quilt patterns, maybe check me out. And if you like having a, seen a bunch of really awesome people over her channel too, because <laughs> yeah, we got like it. We got C or Ian or Donna or Tiffany on there, and you guys are crazy when you guys got them all together. <laughs> um, so I am. Oh, and everybody, her link is in the description box below. So that way, there you can always, if you're not subscribed, go ahead. Um, so I'm going to say hi to everybody in the chat. We got Vicky Ramsey, Andrea Jame, Mama Jean from Jean Captain Stitches, Debbie, Mama Debbie from Inquilt Facts, and do, 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 Denise Sopatch 33. Everybody talking. I'll go back and look at the comments in a moment. We got Fallon, so be it quilts, Leticia. Our cell lady and Joydy, Charlotte, Melissa, Pet Straw House. Oh, okay, guys. Y'all see Retro Cam in here? That's my baby boy. Aw. <laughs> That's my <sweet> baby. <laughs> He is, I believe, either getting ready for work or at work right now. Wonderful. So, thank you, Cam. Love you, baby. And then we got Judy Neighbors and Don Stewart, Mona DeWatt. And it looks like I've gotten everybody so far. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. Elaine Johnson just came in. Hello. So Becca, what are you working on today? Great question, Danelle. So I am working on finishing up my block number two set for a pattern that I have finished writing and I have filmed a tutorial for. I hope to have that video tutorial drop on my channel this week. Um, but it, before I can release the video, I want to be able to show what the quilt looks like finished. So I've got to finish putting it together. So my goal today is to have this quilt top pieced. That's what I am working on. But I've mentioned this before on my live streams. One of the ways, especially when I'm doing a live stream, that I find I am able to multitask is to take the thinking out of the activity, right? And so instead of trying to remember how many blocks I have to make and whether I have all the components for it, I just take a couple of minutes to organize myself and I'm making a little pile with my block and the pieces that are going to go with it so that I can just kind of sit here and mindlessly sew while I chat with you and talk about all the good things. <laughs> awesome <laughs> sauce. And let's see, Cameron says that he is getting ready to go to work. I'm not going to repeat the language he said because I don't, I, I don't want any bad marks on my channel. <laughs> now, everybody, he does have a channel of his own, and it's mainly just around gaming and everything because he loves his video games. So he does a lot of video recorded videos on there with amazing, like, editing to it and everything. So 
if you're interested in video games, check it out. He does all different types of video games, including Sonic the Hedgehog, which is the ultimate favorite. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got Junebug and Mona and... Okay, I already said hi to those two. So would be... Do, 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 do. Terry Amston, good morning, love. <laughs> no worries, Cam. You're fine, babe. Got Lily. All right, I think I got it right. Oh, Sherry Rose, I think I got everybody. Okay, so I am going to be working on. I received some more blocks. So I received 42 blocks from um, Giovanna, which is a member of the Renegades. So mm -hmm. I'll be putting those together today into a quilt. Then I received a bunch of blocks from. Oh, excuse me, from Tony Hill, which is also a Renegade member. And I received some from Vicky. So I'll be getting those all squared up from Vicky Ronzi. And thank you, Vicky. So I'll be getting those all squared up later today. And between starting today through next week, all of next weekend, I plan on getting these all put together at the very least into quilt tops and then getting them quilted and sent out to Donna. But first, I want to show off some birthday presents I got. So I got this beautiful card here from Tony. And it says, you take the cake. And it says, wishing you the happiest of birthdays. Best wishes. Thank you, Tony. And then from Giovanna, I got this. Gorgeous butterflies. And then this gorgeous card here. With a beautiful sentiment inside. It says, happy birthday. I've only known you a short time, but we are kindred spirits, soul sisters, creators, extraordinary, and family. I admire you. You are so kind, generous, supportive of others and their needs. You have so many gifts and and talents. I look forward to getting to know you better. May God bless you this year. Press down, shaken up, and overflowing with abundance. You are a gift to the world. I thank you, God, for bringing you into my life. Much love. Very nice card. Yeah, that one almost made me cry when I read it. I was like, aww. I even took it in there and showed my husband. I'm like, baby, looky. <laughs> and then Vicky Ramsey. Oh, my goodness gracious. So she made me a few items. She, Vicky Ramsey likes to do beadwork. Oh, and okay. So, yeah. So in with her, uh, her um, blog that she sent me. See if I can't figure out how to open this. There we go. She also sent me a few items. So she sent me this ink pen here. Pretty. And she sent me these earrings. It's like a very light purple, purplish pink beads. And then this gorgeous bracelet, which is like a two-tone purple. So, Vicki, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody that has sent me stuff. I truly appreciate it. And the cards will be going up here on my little board up here where I keep everything at. It's nice when people send birthday cards for you. You know, it makes you yeah. feel a little special. It doesn't take much. Even just dropping a little quilted postcard in the mail is always a nice idea. I know. And I, ton, I actually ton ordered the Fallon postcard template so once i get that i'm gonna start making up called the postcards because i like the idea and i wanted to be able to make some to, as well for like even just for like family and stuff yeah absolutely i keep a stack i keep a bin full of pre-made postcards that way when um an event happens or somebody sends me one i can just fill it out and drop it in the mail uh, yeah because i taught 
so for everybody I've been receiving this stuff from, I actually, I've been receiving all these quilt blocks and stuff from, I actually been um, writing, handwriting out thank you cards and sending to them. That's very kind. Yeah, because I'm like, you know, they take the time to make these blocks and send them to me. And some of them have sent me like a huge stack like Giovanna did, like this one right here. That was enough to make one baby quilt or quilt size quilt, whatever. And I'm like, you know, the least I can do is um, send out thank you cards. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't take and much to say I, thank you. And I have like little Danella Stitchery stickers. And so I included a sticker in with each one to make it a little extra special. There you go. That's really nice. It doesn't take much to tell somebody thank you. No, it doesn't. I figure if someone's going to do something kind enough like that for myself or for anyone else, then it's the least I could do. Absolutely. So what are we going to talk about this morning? Um, any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just I, go with I, the flow, lady. <laughs> I, I understand, but... Um, I don't want to steal the conference. Like, I don't want the conference. I don't want to take over your channel. So I'm trying to let you take the lead. Why don't we talk a little bit about what you're going to work on today? What, what are your quilty goals for this weekend? Uh, this weekend is to finish locating my room because I have received so many stuff from the, for the charity quilts that my goal is to get everything piece together into at least the quilt tops by the end of next weekend, if not possibly all quilted up. Okay. And then I also want to finish cleaning out my area and get it organized because I'm going to go through my cabinet over here and reorganize so I can get everything into it where it needs to be. <laughs> Instead of just all like tossed in and hope and pray for the best. <laughs> There you go. I uh I I have I know your plight. So one of the things that I always get with when it when it comes to the room is people see what's behind me and so they're like, oh it's so clean. But what you don't see is what's behind you. Yeah. That's it's not going away. Unfortunately, what's behind me, I can't really hide too much. <laughs> <laughs> and that everybody, I'm telling you right now. That looks way better than what it did yesterday. <laughs> right. I got home from my crash show yesterday. I was like, oh, I can't do nothing in here. Yeah, the um, I I don't usually let it get that bad, but it's right on the edge of I need to stop and tidy up. Um, so there's a few surfaces that I have found in my sewing room become kind of a catch-all. One of them is right you can't see it on camera because i'm kind of portrait mode right now but i have a little table off to my right which i really wish was to my left because i do more of this than this and maybe one day i'll change that but for right now it's there right so there's a shelf down at the bottom of this cart that just collects stuff so i need to tidy that up that's thing number one thing number two about a year ago i bought those calyx shelves that you get from Ikea that are two uh -huh. across and four down. And I laid them on their side and I put two of them side by side underneath my long arm, which fits perfectly in a 12 or in a 10 foot frame. But that surface can collect a little bit of stuff and the table on the back of the long arm collects stuff. So those three areas usually end up being the areas where I'm just putting stuff to get it out of the way. And every so often I need to go clean those off. Yeah, for me, my industrial machine, since I don't use it on a regular basis, and it came with its own table, has became became my catch-all. Yep, 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 yep. And so I did finally get her dug out yesterday. Now I do have nice and neatly folded up stuff on top of her and around her on the desktop. So that would be being relocated today. And so because I got a big project I got to do for a friend of mine. It's a friend of mine and my husband's. He's got a boat and his, I think he called it his boat boots needed the zippers sewn back in. 
And I don't want to put that underneath my juki. Okay. Because I don't feel like that. I don't feel like my normal juki would be able to handle that. That and plus, I don't want all that nastiness in her. <laughs> I'd much rather take the chances with the industrial machine with that one. <laughs> We've got uh, Jean says her long arm seems to be a catch for all of her in-between projects and she's always having to clean it off. I can, I can relate to that, but Vicky's asking you a question in the chat. She's asking if your bracelet fits you. I, honestly, Vicky, I have not even put it on yet. I would do that right now on the camera. And then while she's doing that, uh, Pat Strawhouse said that she is way behind the time to catch up. Her sewing space can officially be declared a disaster zone. Oh, no. <laughs> I think we all get to that point. Oh, I like that. It's like a magnetic clasp on it. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yep. It works perfectly, Vicky. Thank you. And just the way I want it where it's like a little extra loose. Oh, pretty. I used to work with Yeah, these. it's like it's like three tones of purple, it looks like. And then the clasp is like super jeweled out and gorgeous. Very pretty. So what questions do people have it out to the side for now though? What questions people have in the chat for you? What can we get them to ask you and get you to reveal? Let's get this uh, conversation going. Uh-oh. <laughs> I see. I'm way behind the time. Okay, you already read that one. That one. <laughs> Russ says we don't discuss how bad my sewing room looks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Russ, how are you doing? Sorry, I missed you. Hey, Pat Boo. And anyone else I missed? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> My chat lately has been going crazy, so it makes it hard to keep track of. That's okay. I can help for today. Oh, no. Turtle speed is not going to work. Turtle speed. I'm like, why is it moving so slow? Why don't you moving show my machine, Moving my machine around so much yesterday, it got moved down to turtle speed. I'm like, oh, no, this is not happening. <laughs> So what are you working on? What's under your needle right now? I am working on one of the charity quilts for through the Renegades for Harper Strong. So what it is the Renegades, which is the membership group through in Quilt Fact, um, send, we have been asking for six and a half inch snowball blocks. And um, so everybody's sending me the blocks. I'm putting them all together into the quilt top, sandwiching, quilting, and binding. Um, 42 inch by 42 inch, roughly, um, quilts, and then sending them over to Donna by handmade by Ying with Donna. And then she's going to take them to the Ronald McDonald House in Pittsburgh to drop off to show our appreciation to the medical staffing for, uh, for all that they have done for Harper as well as to help out any little ones that may need a little extra hug. Awesome. Okay. We've got a couple of comment or conversation starters in the chat. I'll read them out loud for you. Let's All right. See. So, do you want to Is start there a with... pattern you would love to make, but intimidates you? There you go. You go um, first. Yeah, the um, double carpenter star. I think it's, like a sure. it's the one that uh, like has like the multiple different colors of shades that it goes up. Why does that intimidate you? Uh, because the size of it and doing the pieces on on like in multiple different directions. I have a hard time with with uh, orientation or the getting everything laid out in the proper direction. So the, I always wind up getting things backwards. Like I tried to do a log cabin quilt star for my husband. Mm -hmm. And somehow or another, I got 
one leg of the star turned backwards and it just looked like wonky and I didn't realize until I had it completely done and bound. I'm like, well, you just damn wonky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's for my husband. He's fine. It's just a lap fault. Lily has a question. She says, does anybody have any advice for attaching a quilt block to a t-shirt? Do I just pin and stitch? Um, it do? all depends. If you, my opinion, Becca may have a different version on this and everything and on. You can get both of ours. But my opinion, what I would do is it would depend upon if you want the edges to be a little scrappy looking. You could just stitch it on. And leave, like raw edge stitching or do like a zigzag around the edge or something. Or you could um, also you do like the stitch and flip where you got like the back. You put the pretty side of one fabric the pretty side of the quilt block together uh sew around the edge and then do like a stitch and flip where you leave a little opening where you can flip it and then sew it on there so that way that you don't have any raw edge of the fabric hmm. that way there hides all your raw edges and your seams and no loose thread i wasn't even thinking about any of that my mind immediately went to okay you're Quilt block is probably made out of cotton and the t-shirt is probably made out of knit. And so you're probably going to want to use a ballpoint needle. And that's as far as I got. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, oh, I got to change the needle. We're not doing it. <laughs> Let's see, the quilt I actually made my husband the with the wonky star leg. Um, that one I actually used. The fabric was a sheet, but it looked a lot like a like the plaid shirts t-shirts mm -hmm. and so i had used um did that with his and did that with cotton and i think i even had some batiks in there oh okay. i i mix fabrics all the time well, I don't <laughs> i'm think... just like i'm just like i don't care it, if it looks good i'm gonna do it i don't think it's a problem to mix the fabric but I do know for jersey or knit, if you use a sharp needle, which is what I always have loaded in my machine, you can cut the threads. And so when you're using knit, they say you're supposed to use a ballpoint needle or maybe a universal because it won't cut the threads. Like it won't mess up the weave on a knit. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't deal with clothes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've dealt with clothing some, like as far as like from my mom, because my mother was horrible, 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 horrible about taking her crew neck shirts like this, because mm -hmm. she always was like they're choking her. So she would just take a pair of scissors and and cut them. Yeah. I'm like, Ugh. like quit doing that, because then she would bring it to me. It's like, can you fit this into a V-neck? I'm like, can you quit cutting them? <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I told her, I'm like, I'll make you a deal. I'm like, you quit cutting them and just bring them straight to me and I will fix it. You cut it with a pair of scissors. I'm not touching it. So when you take a crew neck and you want to turn it into a V-neck, what do you do? What I do is I take from right up here at the seam of the collar, I take the stitching all this out right here. Okay. And then I find the center point and I slice that right in half. Okay. And then what I do for the actual shirt portion is I find how I find out if I'm doing it for someone else like my mother, because she's very well endowed. <laughs> <laughs> so I always tell her, I'm like, okay, take a safety pin and mark on the shirt how far down you want that to be. Okay. And from there, I can cut like a V neck shape down to that safety pin. Okay. And then I just kind of take this portion right here, this little collar portion here, and I stretch it down to one side. So I use my serger to sew it in, which you could use just a regular sewing machine as well. But I prefer doing that with my serger. And then I do the other side and I do sew it down to that point. And then at the bottom, I finagle the two ends to crisscross over. So that way there it looks intentional. And then afterwards, I just go along with my sewing machine and matching thread of the shirt and do like a little extra stitch right there to help hold everything nice down and flat. And you can barely tell. Wow. Really neat. 
I actually watched multiple videos because my mom initially wanted to know, hey, how do you, is this something that you can fix for me? I think that would be an awesome tutorial video that you should do. I would love to see that. Oh, definitely would have to look, put that somewhere in my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Just because right now I have between my two lives and then my weekly quilt block series I've been working on. Then I don't know if I could fit any more tutorials in right this second. <laughs> but I do have a request for different items and everything and all, as well as doing a recorded video from start to finish of making one of my fuzzy kittens. So I'm going to be working on that as well. So with Debbie is telling you that she has a problem with angles, which is why she tries to use a design board and design wall, or she'll just call the quilt a new modern design. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's usually like, okay, I get a picture in my head, and then I draw it up in my EQ8, and then put the whole, I like somewhere around here, I'll put up the picture, and I'll try to make sure I go step by step by following how I do that. Because mm -hmm. I really don't have a design wall in here or board. Mm -hmm. I am hoping to eventually get my room rearranged to have a because I already told the husband and son, I want to buy some PVC pipes and make a design wall with it. Yeah. Because I got the fabric over there for the design wall. Okay. I just need some way of hanging it that will work with my space. And I can, like a curtain type of thing where I can move it out of the way whenever I'm not using it. So here's an idea that I had that I thought would be really neat. If you use flannel for your design wall fabric, a lot of times, like with that flannel, you can roll over it with like a lint roller to get the loose threads off of it. And your fabric just sticks to it just by putting it up on there. You don't have, you usually have to pin it straight in, but you can always pin it straight down. But one of the things that I have a problem with with design walls is I can't put my FPP patterns on there unless I turn it around so that the paper is faced out. And that's not how I want to see it. I want to see the quilt as it's coming together. So I came up with an idea. I thought it would be super cool if I got some sheet metal, really thin sheet metal from the hardware store and made a quilted kind of like, not quilted, but almost like a pillowcase, a sleeve for that sheet metal to go down inside of it. And if you could have a frame on the wall to put that sheet metal on, so you can put it on, take it off, put it on, put it, take it off. You could have four quadrants of it to make it a design board element. But what that would allow you to do is magnetically put things up there as well, instead of just putting on the batting. So if you took your flannel and made a flannel sleeve with maybe some batting on the inside to help protect the layers from that sheet metal, and you probably want to clean up the edges of it so it's not super sharp. I yeah. think that would be really cool. And I want somebody else to do it because I don't want to, I, I don't have the tools to do that. But I think that would be amazing. See, that would be awesome because my husband has a wood as well as metal shop out in the garage. Oh, you should do this. You should totally do that. Because they actually just got a mill and a lathe and everything. You should totally and do that. And it would be something that they would love doing, that they're doing for me, but it's also something that they would love doing. Yeah. So and yeah, the that thing about that, if you build it out as four quadrants and you have a frame on the wall where you can put them up there, they're, those sheet metals are like 20 by 20, I think, something like that. So you could still pull that down and then you could have a design board that you're working on at your desk and then you could take it over and put it back up on the wall. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. Do that, Danelle, and then show me what it looks like, and I'll be jealous. <laughs> oh, so you want me to be your guinea pig? Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Oh, I, I, I thought about that last year because I don't have a design wall in my sewing room, and I was thinking about, okay, well, what if I put one up? The problem is that I want it up sometimes, but not all the time. I don't want to sacrifice wall space in my sewing room for a permanent design wall. So I do have these portable design boards or design walls that I got from off the wall design. I've got the medium and the large and they're okay. They're portable. They're nice, but there's some, it takes up floor space. 
And so I don't always have them set out, but it would be really cool to have one that I could have like hidden away, you know, and have it be uh, yeah. portable. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so Mama Jean from Jean Captain Stitcher says, now, Danelle, don't you want to keep up with your adopted mother and the number of whips? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, trying to keep up with all the projects this year because I started off with seven and now I think I'm up to about 20 to 30. Yeah, Holy I think I'm all, well on my way. <laughs> Speaking of your works in progress, how is your lion coming along? I I am on B4. Okay. <laughs> He's coming along extremely slow motion. <laughs> it does take but a bit. Yeah, essentially for right now, because of the Harper Strong quilts and everything, I put him on hold so I can get these completed and out to Donna because I think she wanted them by like sometime the beginning of May. Mm -hmm. So she can go get them all dropped off at once. Mm -hmm. So I put him on hold and everything for a little bit. And then once these are done, then I'll get back to doing him on Sundays as well as working on him sometime, some throughout the week. Susie Hulett, thank you for subscribing. In about half an hour, you'll be able to, um, well, actually not half an hour, because in half an hour, the live stream will be over with, but my next live stream, you would be able to chat as well. I keep mine set up for 30 minutes after you subscribe, so that way that helps keep the spammers down. And anybody that has a channel, if you drop exclamation selfie, you should be able to share your link in here. Patch all the house that clever idea, Becca. I thought it was pretty neat. Yeah, I never even thought about the whole magnet thing, and I got a tons of magnets up there. There you go. I think it's I a great idea. I got some from Missouri Star. I got some from one from So Becca. Oh yeah, I did have some magnets that I passed out. That's right. Uh, yep. See. Yep. I remember those. <laughs> yep, and it stays up here on my workbench all the time. It's where I keep all my magnets at. I got my legit kit one other too. <coughs> so how close are you having the continuum done? Um, well, you can see it up behind me. Though it's rotated 90 degrees, so... Um, there it's got a shift i've got all four of the rows that are done and then the next step is to put them together with the vertical no the horizontal sashing um uh, i'm going to do that today on ian's live stream at two o'clock eastern time and then awesome. i i'll put the borders on too but then i think after that's done i'm actually going to maybe try to piece some very bright flying geese with that extra black and the scraps of those colors to do almost a flying geese border. Oh, that'd be gorgeous. Yeah. So I don't know that I'm going to make my border around it, the width that it was supposed to be. I think I'm going to do a thin inner border, a flying geese, and then another thin inner, a uh, thin outer border so that the flying geese will be separated a little bit. And I'm thinking about maybe doing either the size of the black strips that you see here because i think that's also the distance that's in between each of the rows oh awesome so i i feel like patterns i've said this before you've heard me say it a million times patterns are a starting point for me yes. a pattern is a it's not a step-by-step -step, uh ingredient recipe to make a quilt though when i write a pattern i certainly do write it that way so that you can very easily follow the step-by-steps and make the quilt that's on the cover of the pattern. However, when I sit down and start working with a pattern, I usually start to get inspired and think about ways that I can tweak it or add my own little twist to it. And then I modify it and take it another step or do something a little bit different so that the quilt is mine. I did a pattern. I wrote a pattern called tumbling, no, stepping, tumbling blocks. Yes. 
I can't remember these names. I feel like I should just number them all. Um, but the there was a pattern that I did over the summer called tumbling blocks. Very easy, beginner-friendly pattern. It's on my Etsy shop. And we did that over a weekend so with the VIP members. I think we did one of the retreats with that. And the uh, the quilt was fun. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know what? I had already made like one or two of them because I had to make it to test the pattern, write the pattern. And so when we decided we were going to do this pattern again, I was like, let me add my own flair to it. And so I started changing up some of the different design elements so that I could have a different looking quilt. So yeah, even I, with my own patterns, I'm like, this is just a starting off point for me. <laughs> yeah, I actually Tan, started off that one there that I just showed you guys is the Tumbling Blotch that she's referring to. And I actually thought, okay, well, I'm going to go the extra mile and I'm going to put this embroidered gorgeous design right here on, in the little blank space, the back on spaces to give a little extra interest. I got like four of those done. I'm like, this is taking too long now. <laughs> so, I well, pulled it all apart. so I pulled those sections out and now I'm probably just going to turn it into like a, a baby size quilt. Yeah, the quilt and goes together really fast, but embroidering each of those blocks would take forever. Especially multiple colors, and my machine only does one color at a time. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> one of the very first quilts I made, I did that. I had a family friend who wanted a quilt in autism colors. I didn't even know what a quilt was, so really what I made was a blanket that was barely even quilted through. But every, every, I did a ton of different blocks in red, yellow, green, and blue, the autism colors. And on each one of those pieces of fabric, I embroidered something autism related on a little brother SE 400. So my hoop size was only a four by four and it only did one color. I can empathize with you, Janelle. That took forever. Yeah, I got about three or four blocks on there done up. And I'm like, yeah, no. Because the more I was doing it, the more I was getting frustrated and losing interest in the quilt. Yep, 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 yep. Sylvia says, the colors against that black are gorgeous. Thank you. I really am happy with how it's turned out, which is why I think I want to lean into those flying geese units, because I think it's going to add more of that color pop. Yeah. But I did actually do one of those tumbling block ones. Let me grab it really quick, because I keep it on my couch. Oh, okay. Because I did it, and I did it just for me. Just for you. <laughs> the tumbling blocks one that I did is actually the one that my lovely puppy chewed a hole through. And I had the patch. So this was my scrappy quilt that I did for myself. I did the front of it with Becca's pattern. Oh, that's so pretty. And I love the fabric. Look at the fabrics. It's all sewing related fabric. Yeah. Oh, I see some dusk to dawn in there. Scroll go lower your quilt. That's dusk to dawn from Monique. That top one it looks like. This, this looks right like here? I think, but it might not be coming through. Now I'm no, no, it's not. I see scissors. Never okay. mind. Never mind. Nope. Yeah. And then the backing, I tried, didn't have anything that would match and everything. So I just turned a very scrappy back. There you go. Yep. It was like flannels and whatever else I had to spare. So that was what I did. And I was like, so now that's my couch pillow or my couch <laughs> blanket. So my family already know, knows that once I grab that, and I curl up on my recliner, I'm done. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I, I have a couple of quilts that are stashed around the house now, too. Most of them are in here draped over my chairs, but we keep a quilt on the love seat that's in my family room. We keep a quilt on the, a couple of quilts on the back of the sectional that's in the front room. And then I keep a quilt over the back of the recliner that's in the front room. And I never thought, and then we have quilts on all of the beds. Um, but I never thought that I would actually have quilts that I've made in my home. Some of those quilts are gifts, but 
I like I was making them and giving them away. And then over the past couple of years, I was like, you know what? It's okay for me to keep some of these. So I've got a few that I've made around the house and I'm really excited about that. Yeah, my boys both have a quilt that I made them. My uh and then my husband has a couch quilt that I made him. And I still have in the works of a quilt that I'm making for me and him. And it's gonna be of our wedding colors. Mm. Do you have it handy that you can show us? Yep. Digging for it right now. I'm like, okay, is it in my bin or is it over here? And it's one that intimidates a lot of people. Oh, very pretty. And since we're beekeepers, I'm using bee fabric. Oh, lovely. So you do, what do you, talk to us about the bees. That's so, interesting. Yeah, I'm actually planning on doing a lot of videos this year. Recorded videos. I already talked to the husband. He's agreed to let me record while we do like beehive inspections and all. I just recorded a little short over this weekend mm -hmm. that I'm going to be posting. I just got to do a voiceover on it. Um, And it's going to be really interesting because I was actually holding a bee. Oh, very they're cool. So, they're so cute and fuzzy. <laughs> there's a lady on youtube i haven't watched any of her videos in a minute actually i've forgotten about her but she's a beekeeper and she does little short stories of just working with the bees and she's i don't know there's something about her voice she's very calm and she's very soothing to listen to and it's always interesting because she she uh stories or chronological whatever she captures the whole story of moving entire hives in like a 60 second short and so you're oh, it's wow. very yeah which you know is a lot of work because it can take days sometimes weeks to do that yeah i've not i've not ever done any type of editing to my videos or anything like that because i've not taken the time to learn how to so the voiceover is going to be a whole new experience for me one step because I was time. like, yeah, well, it's like a, my thing is, it's like what I want to say, I got to try to get in there clearly and where everybody can understand me within like the 15, 15 to 20 second short that I recorded. <laughs> yeah. Starting a, when, so I, I like, I feel like, um, so Terry says, I've seen her Becca. I know I love her, but I feel like. <laughs> I feel like we're always learning, right? Lifelong learner, even quilting, we're always learning. And when it comes to computer stuff, I'm always trying to expand too. When I started my YouTube channel, I didn't know anything about editing. I, I didn't even, like, I, I was intimidated by the whole idea of it. I had a phone and that was it. I didn't even have a computer. I had work computers and there was no way I was going to be able to install anything on those. I didn't have a computer at home of my own. I, I think, I, wait, no, I take that back. I did. I, th I had a Mac mini that was very old. And so I just chose not to do anything with the video stuff on it because it was going to be too slow and painful. So I did everything on my phone and my iPad and that was it. I downloaded iMovie and I just looked up, I, I just looked up what I needed to know. And so I've taken that template and I've started applying it to other areas. And the reason why I'm talking about that is because I'm doing that with Illustrator right now. It can be very overwhelming to be like, okay, I need to learn everything in Final Cut Pro or everything in Illustrator. But when you break it down into, I just need to know how to do this one thing and you figure that one thing out at a time, then over time, you're going to start building all of those little blocks and you're going to be more confident in that program. So starting off with, I just need to do a voice voiceover. So what does that mean? You're going to have to know how to remove the sound from the video clip that you edit that you had and how you're going to be able to record or put in a new, a new sound clip. And whatever program it is that you're trying to do that in, I would just do a Google search for a YouTube video. That's what I'm doing for Illustrator. That's what I did for Final Cut Pro. That's what I did for all of my camera stuff. That's what I did for live streams. That's what I do when I need to learn something. I just yeah. ask the one question. Yeah, I've, I've even, because my youngest son, Retrocam, he does a lot of video editing. 
but yeah. he uses he uses a different software and he says that he's still learning on that too yep so i'm he, still learning on mine yeah so i'm like because i asked him i'm like okay i'm like i need you to come over and teach your mama some new tricks <laughs> yeah i've i've used imovie i used imovie all the time until i accidentally made the 300 dollar purchase for final cut pro <laughs> oopsies well so i kept adding it to my cart and taking it back out and adding it to my cart and taking it back out and one time i added it to my cart and i hit purchase a little too quickly before my my finger hit it before my brain knew what i was doing and so then afterwards i was like well i guess i'm jumping in with both feet now <laughs> yeah and mitzi that mitzi that is very true if the honeybees go extinct humans won't be able to survive without them we rely upon honeybees for our for the nutrition for the food for our animals as well as nutrition for ourselves yep because they pollinate all plants vegetables fruit they pollinate all that. Yep. So without honeybees, a lot of stuff, including possible humans, would go extinct. Yep. Because we need our pollinators. And so that was one thing that really interested myself and my husband, because we always wanted to be beekeepers, but never really had the time in our lives. And then when COVID took place and everything went on hold, we were like, okay, we need to find new hobbies that we can do at home and still keep ourselves, still help keep our sanity. Yep, absolutely. So he picked up the beekeep. Him and our oldest son um, picked up the beekeeping. I picked up quilting and gardening. And in a way, I feel like I'm helping out with the beekeeping because I provide, I help provide the gardening. There you go, because they need the they need to spread that pollen. So yeah, they need the pollen, and then we try and collect the, uh, um a certain amount of the honey each year. Harvest a certain amount. We leave plenty of them for them to eat and all, and then we take the excess and we use it in our hot tea as well as anybody local that wants to buy some. Then we sell it and all. So, and I've even sent Ian a jar. Oh, <laughs> that's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, he was always talking about honey on his channel and everything, how much he loves and how much it costs. I'm like, I can send you a jar of honey. Yep, I, we love honey here. We keep a we keep a jar of it around. One of the things that we really like honey in, and we don't have to do anything for it. There's a company not too far from us. It's a tea company. They're called True Honey Teas. And so they take these really big oversized tea bags, not on a string, it's just a little tea bag. Uh, not little, it's actually ginormous. And they put their loose leaf tea down inside of it with a little bit of crystallized honey. And then you drop it down in your cup of hot water and you have a, or cold water, you could cold steep it too. And you have a lovely cup of flavored tea with just a little bit of sweetener that's sweetened naturally from the honey. Oh, awesome. Yeah, every evening um, before bed, and then also on chilly days, because um, <laughs> you know how it is in Michigan. Yep. <laughs> um, so a lot of times and everything and all, we'll try and make like a hot cup of tea. And then for the sweetener, we just add in like a spoon or two of the honey from our bees. And we've been doing that all winter long. And yep. it's so good and soothing. That was the the two tricks that I remember from being sick. The first one is if whenever I had a sore throat, it was always a cup of hot tea with some lemon and honey in it. And then yes. if my stomach was upset, it was a glass of Verner's. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Someone told me before to to heat up the Verner's. I'm like, eh. No. I don't know if I would do that. <laughs> no, I'm like, I, I, I'm not even a big like burners person i wasn't when i was a kid but i like it now and i think part of it might just be the nostalgia fact yeah ba -da -ba 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 anybody got any questions we got about 12 minutes left of the live stream because we're going to be ending at 11 o'clock today. So anybody got any questions for myself or for Becca? 
I know there's been a lot of comments going on and I'm sorry if I missed anybody. <laughs> you want to tackle that one from Amy? Verner's is basically ginger ale, but it used to be a Verner's that you could get in only Michigan, but now you can get it outside of the state. It's a, it's a Michigan thing uh, or used to be, and now it's a everywhere thing. <laughs> yeah. Fago's a Michigan pop too. Yes, it is. I actually live not too far away from their warehouse. Yep. I have Fet Fago and better made chips. It used to be every time I'd go in to visit somebody, I'd be like, okay, you need strawberry pop and a bag of better made. <laughs> My husband's favorite bot favorite hot potato chips is the better made hot chips. Oh yeah. Because him and my son both love hot spicy things. I am like anti hot spicy. Oh, uh, Denise, like, says I, go ahead. I was going to say there are days where it's like even just like a little bit of pepper in my food is too much for me. That's how my mom is. All right. All of those are sewn, and now I get to square them up. Awesome sauce. Andrea says, Becca, I'm glad you were working on your pattern blocks today. I was not going to release mine if it was the same as yours, but it is not put together exactly like mine, so I feel better releasing it. Andrea, don't ever worry about what I'm doing in my lane. Do you. If we happen to duplicate each other, I'm not upset by that. I'm not angry. I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to lash out at anybody. You be creative and do your thing. So what Andrea is talking about, Danelle, I don't know if you saw this last week. So I did uh, not. Teresa Louise did uh, usually does a live stream on Sundays if she's feeling well. But sometimes she goes MIA or she cancels last minute. And so last week she had to cancel. She wasn't feeling too well. And so I decided to do an impromptu live because I was kind of just sitting around the sewing room sewing. And I figured it would be a great way to keep me accountable to getting stuff done. And when usually when I do an impromptu live stream, I'll do the live. And then afterwards I mark it unlisted. So you had to be there to hear the conversation, but there was really, there was some really good convo that came up. And one of the topics that came up is whether or not you should sell a pattern. And my thought is if you took the time to write down the instructions and illustrate it, and it is a, it is good instructions that people find useful, then your time is worth something. Even if somebody else out there has made the pattern before, even if somebody else out there has made that quilt before, even if somebody can figure out how to make it, your time is still valuable. It's still worth something. It shouldn't matter that somebody out there won't find the pattern purchasable for them somebody else out there will so my my response back to her is if she took the time to do the quilt math write it all down type it all up illustrate it then she shouldn't give that away for free because her time's worth something yeah i mean for instance look how many different patterns there are for the carpenter star exactly one of those is going to make sense to your brain right maybe yeah. multiple of them and it might be that that pattern like the carpenter star missouri star has one i know and there's tons of other places that have them some of them are free some of them are for sale one of them is going to make sense for you and you might find yeah. that one and never buy another one that's but you fine. might find that the one that say andrea writes might be simplified enough or worded just properly that it clicks. Yep. Everybody learns a little bit differently. When I write my patterns, I make them visual and I make them very direct and to the point with numbered steps. So you're not getting paragraphs of information, but there are some people that want the whole narrative and they want the whole story and they want paragraphs of information. They want the very long detailed pattern so they know exactly they want it to be more like a book and that's fine too the point isn't that mine is right and theirs is wrong or theirs is right and mine is wrong the point is that theirs feeds one audience and mine feeds another yep exactly and yeah. it's so funny because the continuum block or quote behind you yeah actually resembles a lot like the tumblr it kind of does. 
Well, especially because of the way it's laid out, right? When I turn yeah, it's it, like the yeah, it's like if you shortened the black strip, yep, you'd have your tumbler block. Basically, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, you're you're only going to be able to do so many things with squares, rectangles, and triangles before you start duplicating what other people have already done or are doing. You can change it up a little bit with color and placement of fabric, but the quilt design oftentimes I feel like is not what's copyrighted or trademarked. It's the instruction and the math that you took to do it. So when I, I give myself a little bit of grace, when I sit down and decide I'm going to write a pattern, I it can be inspired by other things that I see out there. I would be lying if I said I wasn't inspired by other things that I've seen in the quilting world, but all of the quilt math, all of the instructions I'm doing on my own. I'm testing it. I'm coming up with it out of my head. I'm doing the math. I'm doing the work for the pattern. I am not duplicating anybody else's work. And that's, that's just operating with integrity. And it's the yeah. most I can do, right? Just be honest about, just do the work yourself and know that you did do the work yourself and then have confidence that you did your best effort and call it and put it out there, see what happens. Yeah, and just like Andrea just said in the chat and everything, myself, Debbie from Set, and a few others are testing out one of our patterns right now. Yeah. And once we have all that info back to her, then on our take of it and all, then she's planning on publishing it. So. <clears throat> yep. 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 Um, Irish sale lady said she's trying to get through a new pattern with one inch half square corners. No, Glad you. you can't hear me here because <laughs> I've used some very colorful language. I'm going to take a break because I'm not giving up. All I got to say is that, Tani. Mm -mm, no, thank you. <laughs> Sylvia says, I think paid is good, but it's the free patterns and the scraps shared with me that taught me to quilt. Now I'm ready to purchase with confidence. There's nothing wrong with a free pattern. This was a free pattern. I have some free patterns out there. It just not every one of my patterns is always free. So yeah. That's so fun. I like taking patterns and doing like a twist to them. Cause I yeah. look at patterns as being a foundation block for me to start with. And then I like to somewhere down the road of making the quilt add a twist to it yep. to give it my own like a little touch to it. Yep, yep, yep. Patterns, I, I feel like people buy a pattern for one of a few reasons. And maybe you hit the category for multiple of these areas. I think some people buy patterns as a placeholder for a project that they intend to make later. I think some people buy the pattern because they want the cutting instructions and the fabric requirements, but they could figure out how to make the quilt on their own. And so they might use it as reference as they're going or a launching off point. That's usually me. <laughs> and then some people just buy the pattern because they're supporting creators. I saw Pat Strawhouse in here say that she, she, she can usually figure it out on her own, but she likes to support creators be it content creators on YouTube or quilt pattern writers or whatever. And so she'll buy the pattern too. So I, I feel like the big two though are like, you don't want to do the quilt math and you just need a little bit of help. You have a placeholder for a project you want to make later, but then there is the population that wants you to give them every single step, every bit of the way. My friend Mary is a pattern follower. She wants the pattern. She wants it to tell you <laughs> exactly what to do and how to do it. I'm just like, I, I, I okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, do you got anything? Uh, you already talked about um the fact that you, Ian, and, and Tiffany are going to be live this afternoon on his yes. over on his channel, correct? Yep. And anything new or exciting coming up this week that you want to let everybody know about, or? Hopefully the tutorial for this pattern will drop and the pattern itself. And if you're a member of the VIP program, like you are, Danelle, you'll get a copy of that pattern for free over on my website. So keep your eyes peeled, probably Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Tuesday. We'll see what happens. I got to say one thing, though, before sure. we take off and all. Sure. Being a VIP membership over on your, over on, for underneath <laughs> so Becca is amazing because I love getting the so longs once a month as well as the weekend long ones quarterly, which are yep. awesome. I always tell my husband, son, I'm like, okay, I got my quarterly so long. 
Don't don't bug me. I'm in my room all weekend. <laughs> I'm like, I'm coming out to take care of Loki, which is my Yorkie and diapers that is special diet and all these other issues going on. But I'm like, I come out, take care of him, take him out potty, give him his uh, feedings every couple of hours. I'm like, and then it's back to my room. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice because on those, so on the once a quarter we call those a virtual retreat and then at the end of every month on Sundays what Danelle is referring to so next week we'll have one uh we do a zoom from 2 p.m to 6 p.m on Sunday afternoons and it's just a open session where you get to sit and sew with some other people we usually do break you down into smaller rooms so that there's up to about nine or ten folks but you have the ability to come and go from any room that you want so sometimes the rooms will ebb up to 12 or 15 and sometimes they'll dwindle down to just two or three. But the, the, um, the Zooms are set up with the intention that you get to sew with your friends or you get to make new friends. You get to have some company. And what's nice about the weekend long, the virtual retreats, is it's really kind of a retreat type of environment. We'll play some games sometimes. We'll do some prizes sometimes. We'll sometimes do a project from start to finish. Sometimes it'll be UFO based. But it starts on Saturday morning. It ends on Sunday night. There's even after hour parties. And you don't have to pack to go anywhere. You just come and sit. And all of this is... I think that's the biggest benefit that you're getting for the $5 a month is the Zooms. But there are some other perks that you get with it, too. And you can check all that out on my website. Yeah, and it's awesome. I mean, your virtual retreat was my very first ever quilt retreat. Oh, really? Yes. And so I was like, I love this. And yeah, it's, it's what actually got me in front of a camera very first time ever. Yeah. And I was like, I loved it so much on the whole monthly or quarterly times of us getting together that I'm like, it actually helped encourage me to want to start my channel. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm yeah. like, I love this and I love that connection, uh, being able to share things with the, with other like-minded people. Yeah, it's fun. We've had, um, I've seen a few people come into the Zooms and they start off with, I'm camera shy. I don't want to turn my camera on. And then slowly they start turning the camera on because they want to interact with the other quilters. I know one of the things that I dealt with, and it's been a few years since I've had a channel, so it's not as fresh for me as it might be for you because I know you're still starting. But when I started a channel, one of the things that I was really terrified about is putting my face on camera because I didn't want the comments. I didn't want people to tell me I was ugly or I was fat or I had no place being on YouTube. I didn't want to hear that. And in my head, I felt like those were going to be the comments I was going to get back. It took a little bit to get comfortable in front of the camera and then kind of like tiptoe in to see that people were not going to be mean. They weren't going to be like that. It's, I mean, you get the occasional weird comment, but I think those are even trying to come from a place of love. So I don't usually let them take up too much space in my head. But once you see how kind quilters are, it makes it so much easier to be comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Quilters overall from everything I've ever seen is people, a group of people that are willing to give anything and everything to show love and help others that need it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. But, yeah. all right, I think from here, we are going to go ahead and end because I know you got stuff to do and I got stuff to do and yeah, I got finished locating my room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have actually... If, um, if y'all don't you... see me next weekend, send, send, send in the recruits to come find me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my, my very good friend, Mary, should be here very shortly. I'm really excited. I haven't seen her since she moved to South Carolina. She's driving up today. She actually left her house at 3 a.m. to be here, and it's like an eight-hour drive. So I'm going to oh guess she's going to up the driveway anytime. Give her a big hug for us all. I will. I will. I will. I'm, I'm sure I won't even be able to give her the hug because I think she's going to squeeze squeeze me harder than the life me. out of you <laughs> yes i was trying to think of the right words i could not do that so i think i'm gonna i'm gonna square up my blocks and i'll let you do all of the things that you need to do to sign off so i'll, I'll stop talking now <laughs> bye everybody make sure you give a smile to anybody and everybody you come past and everything because you never know when it might change their day That's bye nice. bye guys <laughs>